Welcome to the GeoBreeze Travel Podcast, a show for anyone wanting to level up their travel hacking lifestyle. I'm your host, Julia Menez. I'm a travel hacker, coach, speaker, Filipina American ENTJ who loves solid travel gear and using shortcuts on spreadsheets. On this show, I'm on a mission to bring you travel hackers from all walks of life to help you level up your travel hacking game. We dive into credit cards, miles, points, strategy, mindset, and the secrets behind how to travel the world for next to no cost. So let's get hacking. Did you open up a credit card to buy the ring so that you could meet oh, a minimum spend? Don't don't get me started. I had four credit cards. <laughs> I'm a little bit extreme. I had a, a, a city business bank bonus for uh, 30,000 miles. I had uh, an offer for my Marriott Brilliant card to spend like $1,000 to get 10,000 uh, Marriott points. I had my Chase in cash. And I forget what other fourth or oh, another city advantage, actual personal credit card. And I was talking to the, the manufacturer of the ring and I was like, I need to pay with four credit cards. And they were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, why do you need to pay with so many credit cards? Can't you just like, we offer financing if you need financing. I'm like, no, I'm trying to get like all these points. And like, I need to pay for this trip with miles. Hello, travel hackers. You just heard a clip from Juan Escobar from Juan Ricardo Jr. Juan recently took an incredible trip to the Maldives where he proposed to his now fiance, Sarah. Congrats again, guys. In this episode, Juan and I discuss which cards he used to book his first class flights and his overwater bungalow at the St. Regis Maldives, what the health and safety procedures around COVID-19 were like for his trip, and how Juan goes about travel hacking large purchases from distressed houses to engagement rings. Also, if you are looking at planning a wedding anytime soon, please make sure you are strategically allocating all of that wedding spend so that you can get your honeymoon for free, just like Juan is going to do. If you need any help at all with planning out how to get the most points out of your wedding budget, or really any budget, you can always set up a free 30-minute travel hacking coaching call with me at calendly.com slash geobreeze, and I will leave a link to that in the show notes for you. And now, on with the show. Hey, Juan, welcome to the GeoBreeze Travel Podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. I am so excited to hear about this Maldives trip and your proposal and everything that went into it, because there's so much that goes into this from what credit cards do you buy the ring with? And oh, yeah. how did you set up flights, hotels, everything like that? But before yeah. we get into all of the juicy details, mm-hmm. how did you get started with points and miles in the beginning? Yeah, I actually stumbled into this hobby by accident. I was I was always interested in credit cards growing up. I don't know why I wanted one, but I just wanted a credit card, you know? So I didn't know about benefits or cashback or points or anything. So it was uh, like around 19 that I just applied for the, it was a Chase Freedom and I got rejected. So quickly I went into Google. I was like, what can I do about this? There has to be something like, why would I get rejected? So I called them and I was like, hey, you know, I'm just trying to get a credit card. I'm not looking for thousands of dollars. I just want $500, you know, show that I'm able to use it and pay it off. And then they, they just they're like, all right, we can do 500 bucks. So they gave me a $500 credit limit. And I was like, sweet, now I have my credit card. Like, why did I want it? I don't know. So I just started using it and then quickly realized that I was getting cash back on it. So I was like, wait, so I'm spending money. I'm getting cash back for the spend. And this is awesome. So I started going all in on all my transactions on cash back. So I did that for at least two to three years of my early, I guess you could say, credit card career. I did that for a while and so yeah, I started doing the cash, the whole cashback thing. And then it wasn't until I actually started traveling that I realized how points are at least to me a little bit more valuable. So one of my first redemptions was the Park Hyatt in New York City. And it was a, it was special to me because it was my 25th birthday and I was like, you know what? I need to splurge on something. I have the points. So I did that and once the whole trip, uh, we only stayed there one night. And in the back of my mind, I was like, I'm using 30,000 points to hire it to book this. This is $300 cash back. Like, I wouldn't pay $300 for a hotel room, at least at that time. So it wasn't until I got to Park High and I realized I was like, whoa, this room is going for $1,000 at least. And the experience, the breakfast, everything, I was just like, I got so much value out of it. That I was just like, there's no, like, I, I'm just went all in. I switched everything from cashback to two points. And uh, I just started going 
from there, saving, spending, manufacturing, spending a bit. But yeah. What were some of the first credit cards that you opened once you were like, all right, I need to do travel points and not just cash back points? Yeah, I just went all in with Chase first. I got the Chase Sapphire Preferred. And then I got the Chase uh, Freedom Unlimited. And then I got into American Express and I did all American Express credit cards. And then I started towards me towards, it wasn't until recently I started getting the, the city cards, so like the city advantage, city double cash. And right now I think I have about 20 credit cards under my name, well, between my business and, and personal without player two. So, yeah. Nice. And so tell us a little bit about your business. What do you do in your day job? And do you have any side gigs? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm a project manager for a construction company. So that really opened up my eyes to like the the industry of like, pretty much remodeling or flipping houses and stuff like that. So personally, I buy uh, distressed properties, I fix them up, and I rent them out. So I, I, I do this and I funnel all of my spend through that. I actually got a little bit too extreme and then I buy a lot at Home Depot. So I realized that they sell Home Depot gift cards at like Staples and Office Max. So I would go in there, I would buy, you know, thousands at a time and, and they would be questioning like, are you sure you know what you're doing? This isn't like a, some sort of tax fraud or you're not giving them to anyone. I'm like, no, I just want to rack up points and miles and do this with it. And yeah, they, they were, I was actually allowed to do that like twice and then the manager came and they're like yeah right, you can't buy this many gift cards anymore we're gonna give you a, we're gonna set a limit so right now i don't really do that much right now i don't have any all my properties are fixed up i am looking to buy another one and same thing as soon as i acquire another property i'm gonna start all over like putting everything on credit cards that's how i generate so much spend that's awesome yeah. and these types of side gigs where you are some people just do regular buying and reselling. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm just going to buy some clothes and resell them on Poshmark, or I'm going to mm-hmm. buy literally anything and then resell it on eBay. Houses are like a whole nother game where you're like, I'm going to buy. It is, pretty- yeah, especially like in the city that I, I, I'm in in Chicago, everything is a little bit expensive. So there's no way to around it. Like you have to spend money to like get the quality there. So like, easily you could probably buy a property and and put in you know ninety one hundred and twenty thousand dollars into it and put that all on credit cards if you know how to do it you know expense it pay it off before it's due and and do and just i want i wouldn't want to say credit cycle because you don't want to do that too much but it's doable makes sense and so you mentioned you had 20 credit cards before player two before player two yeah and when, when Sarah and I met, I think she didn't have that many. And I'm over here opening cards under her name. I'd be like, we need to do this to get these points and get this travel. And she's starting to learn into it, but she's not as into it as, as I am. And she's, you know what, I trust you. Just if you think we need it, let's do it, you know. But yeah, I, I'm the one that's usually like looking for deals. and What's the, the best credit card, the optimal strategy? And having her being so on board about this is awesome. I bet. And... I bet also when you got to take her on this amazing Maldives trip, this really also yeah. opened up her eyes to what's possible yeah. with points and miles. Yeah. So at first, like when we first started traveling together, it was it wasn't as going to the Maldives. It was we kept moving up. We started off with doing trips to New York, and then okay, that was New York was fun. We went to the Bahamas a few times, and then we've been to Los Angeles. We've been all over the country. And then it wasn't until we started getting into like international travel, going to Europe. We've been to Dubai, Egypt, and then the Maldives, and then it's just keep it keeps getting better and better redemption. Yeah. That's amazing. So yeah. let's walk through a little bit. How did you plan out this Maldives trip, and not just the actual flight and hotel and everything, but mm-hmm. also the proposal that happened yeah. on the Maldives. So let's start with, let's go chronologically. Which piece did you plan out first? Well, it the Maldives trip started off with Sarah. She got a mailer in the mail and it said that she had about a little bit over 100,000 Marriott points. And I had about 100,000 Marriott points at the time. And I was like, is this a mistake? Because Sarah doesn't have any Marriott credit cards or anything. And then we looked into it and with her work, she would travel to uh, she would travel to uh, Madison and she would stay at a Marriott. So she accumulated all these points we didn't know about. So then I started looking into it, and it was, yeah, she had them. So I quickly referred her to the my personal Marriott Brilliant card, 
I also referred her to the the Marriott business card. I, I quickly transferred a hundred thousand because this was late two thousand nineteen. I barely made it. I quickly transferred a hundred thousand uh, points to her, and then in early twenty twenty, I transferred another hundred hundred thousand. So she had a decent amount of points at that moment. And I was like, all right, what can we do with it? And then I started doing my research and came to the conclusion that the St. Regis Maldives is, it is like, it's one of our bucket list destinations and we should just go, we should just do it. And we had enough points for a five night stay. So I booked it. And at the time we were been dating for three years. And I, I also knew that I wanted to do it and I was just looking for the right moment. And in the back of my mind, I, as soon as I saw that, I was just like, this is it. Like I, I have to do it. I have to plan for it. The proposal is going to be it. And what better place than the Maldives? That's amazing. So when you were, you planned out the hotel first. Yeah. So yeah. how about flights? How did you plan out your flights to get to the Maldives? Once yeah, you already it was, it was, company? it was kind of like simultaneously because like I found a deal early 20, uh, I knew that we wanted to travel somewhere. It, it was either going back to Dubai or going to Omaha or somewhere else. And But then I found a deal in economy round trip for Sri Lanka for $450. So I knew Sri Lanka was like an hour away from the Maldives. And I was like, this is it. If we could get there, then just take that quick trip to Maldives. This is our way of going for at a very reasonable price. So we bought the flights and we bought the hotel around the same time. But this was the pre-COVID. So once the whole pandemic started starting to happen, I was starting to get worried. And they were putting all these rules and regulations. A lot of shutdowns were happening. So one of those rules and regulations was that like you weren't allowed to travel to uh, different hotels or d- different guest houses, uh, they called it. So... I had to, I wanted to minimize as much risk as I could. And they, United Airlines did a schedule change more than four hours for us. So this was my opportunity to call them, cancel, get our money back. And as soon as that happened, I started looking for award space for uh, flights straight to the Maldives. So I just, like I said, I really wanted to mis- minimize as much risk as I could. We wanted to go, just go straight to the Maldives. So if we were going to go through like Switzerland to Sri Lanka to the Maldives, we could have been stopped at any point. And hey, like you guys can't travel there or you guys can't enter the country. So we did that. And I always knew that I wanted to try Q Suites. So that was that was one of them. And I'm so new into trying uh, different airline products that I, I want to get the most experience. So I knew if we fly there Q Suites, we could fly out back in Q Suite, but we could also try a different airline. So that's why I was uh, researching and I came, to, I, I came to the conclusion that, you know what, we should do Turkish on the way back. And Turkey uh, does allow Americans to enter. So it, I knew they were somewhat flexible for, for us to travel through. So I, we, that's what I did. And I was like, we're going to go from Chicago to Doha to the Maldives and the Maldives to Istanbul to Turkey and that's going to be our itinerary and yeah. So which points did you use to transfer to the Q suites and what credit cards did you use in order to earn those points? Yeah, I I opened up the I opened up the City Advantage and then I did that for personal and business and I did this before I knew I wanted to fly Q suites because I I generate a lot of spend and it, sometimes it's w- more worth it to me to go bonus hunting. So if I find a good sign up bonus, I can easily hit it and just so I'll get the credit card and, and get the bonus, even if I don't have a redemption in mind. So I had those two credit cards. I had about 160. No, actually, I had a, about 130,000 miles and I needed 150. And just so happens, I got a mailer in the mail that said if I open up a city business account with them. I would get 30,000 miles. So that's what I did as well. So I also opened up that, that business account. I got the miles for it. I was ready to just buy it. And as for the return flight for Turkish Airlines, they're a partner with Aeroplan, the Star Alliance. So I knew that uh, membership rewards transfer into Aeroplan. So I like I had an, also enough points to, to book that. So it was pretty easy to do the transfer 
find the award space and and just lock it in. Nice. Tell us a little bit about what this experience was like when you are just on this flight for 16 hours. Yeah. Like it, for me, it was blo- like I was my mind was blown. Uh, I come from a background of not vacationing as much. And the, the vacation that I did growing up with my family was a 36 hour road trip to Mexico to see family. <laughs> and we would do that like year after year. And it was some of my best childhood memories. It was fun. But as I got older, it was just like another road trip, another road trip. And like, that's when uh, I started working, getting my own money and I I would pay for myself to fly there. And I was like, this is flying is so much easier. It's so much more convenient. So I started traveling a bit more and it just made me uh, appreciate like all these nice things, the nice meals, the, the comfort more than anything. It's the comfort that like you could just travel and at least 36 hours driving to Mexico versus thir- versus a four hour flight was a lot better. So when I'm in Q suites and I'm laying down and they're consistently feeding me food and champagne, I was just like a little kid in the candy store. I was like, I can't believe someone can actually travel like this consistently. And it was just, we were blow- we were both taken back. We were just amazed. What kind of COVID restrictions do they have both in the Chicago airport, on the Maldives side, Mm -hmm. like Doha? Tell us about the COVID restrictions and what you have to do there. Yeah, actually, the the restrictions were changing consistently. And when they first opened up, they were allowing Americans to go into the Maldives with a negative uh, PCR test. And there there was a lot of questioning of the timing that you needed to get it so it was they started off with 72 hours before you depart you needed a a negative pcr test and then they extended it to 96 hours but our our situation was that we were flying out on wednesday and our 96 hours were start at saturday night because we flew out wednesday night so we were we had to find a place because we really wanted to make sure that her and I were getting a negative PCR test. We wanted to test, you know, as soon as the 96 hour mark started. So we found a place and we got our negative PCR test and you have to submit it to them beforehand to the, I think it was the Maldivian immigration website and you get a, a QR code. So once you submit that, you also have to have a paper document that says, well, at that time, it said you had to have your passport number on there. You had to have where the lab results were from, the time you got it, the date, all that info. So as soon as I got to the airport, they, they asked for it. And it's so sad because there was people in front of us that like were, they would get the wrong test done. They would get a, a rapid test versus the actual PCR test. And those rapid tests, you get the results within like 15 minutes, but they're also like 50% accurate. So they wouldn't allow that. And it just sucks that like you anticipate to travel and you get to the airport and you have the wrong test done and there's no way you can get a PCR test. It takes about two to two. Yeah. About two to three days to get the results back. So you have to be very cautious. You have to know what you're doing and, and you have to be sure that like you're doing the right thing just so you're able to travel. That is a good tip because, yeah. oh my God, that would be heartbreaking. I can't even imagine if you had planned out this entire yeah. trip and then oh. test on and like, you're not allowed to fly. So once, yeah, once we got to Doha, they didn't ask much. Um, we didn't enter the country. We were just transiting there. So we were nine hours at the airport and as for the Maldives, the same thing. We get to the Maldives, they check your temperature and that was pretty much it. All right. So let's talk about planning out the proposal mm-hmm. too, in addition to the hotel and the flights and mm. the COVID testing and everything else, mm-hmm. you have an added piece of planning to your trip that most people don't have. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about how did you travel hack the ring? Oh, yeah, yeah. So first I started off with number one, my budget. What could I afford? You know, so I, I set the X amount of money that I knew I could spend uh, that I could afford at the time. And then I worked backwards. I was like, all right, this is how much money I have to sp- or I'm spending how can I get the maximum amount of value out of it? So I, in order to prepare for this, you know, I opened up three credit cards and a business account that all required uh, sign up bonuses. And I found a manufacturer that was able to manufacture the ring that I wanted with the diamond, the spec, the everything. And they were actually pretty open to the idea of me using different credit cards, but they thought I I was only going to use two. 
And it wasn't like, no, I, w- I want to use four different credit cards to buy this ring. And they were like, sir, are you sure? Can you afford this? We offer financing. Like, why? Like, I was like, no, like, I, I want to do this so I could get the miles. I want to get the points. And, and it's optimal strategy for me. So they they understood it. It, it was, They were very taken back because not a lot of people need four credit cards to buy something. They thought I was like, probably couldn't afford it or something. But it was just to get the maximum amount of points for this transaction. And the ring is absolutely beautiful. People should just yeah. go check out your Instagram for what it looked yeah. like. Thank you. All right. So let's talk about the actual experience in the Maldives. Mm-hmm. Tell us about your hotel experience, what the food was like, what the weather was like. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. Um, the St. Regis honestly stood out so much. The, their hospitality service is amazing. In order to plan for the proposal, I was consistently emailing them. I was talking to them. I was like, all right, what can I do? What are different ideas? And they're so helpful. So as soon as we get from like to the airport, we have an employee there waiting for us. Um, they're handling all the luggage. And th- one thing about the Maldives is like they have seaplane transfers. And that's not part of the hotel or the resort. Um, that's a different company. So they have they handle the, uh, the check-in process, the checking in our luggages. And they also give you like an amenity kit and, and stuff like that. So from and they ha- and the same we just has their own lounge at the seaplane terminals so you're not just waiting for your seaplane you're sitting in a lounge where you have food drinks you can shower and so they're very top notch and as soon as we got to the actual island itself the Maldives itself I mean I mean the resort as soon as we got to the resort our butler knew our names he anticipated he knew everything like he he was so detail oriented. He has uh, our itinerary already planned out just in case we want what we wanted to do because we didn't pre book anything. Uh, he was just like, Oh, I have this already lined up for you guys. You guys don't have to do it, but if you guys choose to do it, I already lo- uh, lined it up because due to COVID, they restricted a lot of things. There's a lot of limitations of what you can do. Example for the gym, it's not open, up, it's not open to everyone. You have to sign up for it, make a reservation, and only four people are allowed in there. And you had to book it up with, with a, within a time slot because they need enough time to clean it after someone uses it. So they're very safe in regards to that, but it's just somewhat inconvenient if you have no nothing booked. So you have to get there and book everything. And so one, another thing, another tip that I would give is do your pre-bookings before you get there. Find out what they're doing, what has changed from pre-COVID and sign up for all of that, all those activities. The weather, I also went when it wasn't 100% ideal. It's in between the, the rainy season and the, the dry season. So I'm the type of guy that, like, I'll, I'll, I'll risk it a bit. You know, I'll go just when it's a little bit more economical. But the weather was perfect. It, it rained twice on us, and it was for about, like, 10, 15 minutes, and that was pretty much it. And other than that, the weather was, was perfect, 82 degrees every day. It was awesome. I was consistently snorkeling there. It's just amazing. The fact that you're just sitting in an overwater bungalow and, you know, within a few steps, you could be snorkeling with a turtle, a shark. It's out of this world for sure. How many points does it take per night in order to book an overwater bungalow at the St. Regis? Yeah, actually, that was pretty cool because um, the same at the St. Regis, they had a, a promo going on. I forget what they called it, but it was, I guess you were able to book it at off-peak rates regardless of what, if it was a, a standard peak or off-peak. And usually a Category 8 Marriott is about 85,000 uh, points for for the standard rate. And off-peak rate, it, they lower it to 70,000. So I was, I had, I had, a, I think at the time, yeah, a seven-night stay. And I was very tempted to, you know, add, add a standard rate at 85,000 points a night. And I was very tempted to you, all right, if I cancel this and rebook it right away at the off-peak rate, I could save about, you know, like 80,000 uh, points on this redemption. So I looked into it and I've read a lot of horror stories online of, of people canceling their their reservation. And then it's not becoming available again for them to rebook it. So I decided not to, and I just stuck with it. I was like, the, the amount of points that I could save by doing that, but also running the risk of not having the reservation, I just wouldn't do it. So at the end, we ended up paying like about 600,000 points. And then 
we also used they give you an option to upgrade so we had we just had a regular overwater villa but for 75 dollars a night for every night you're there you could get upgraded to the the suite so we ended up paying six hundred thousand dollars or six hundred thousand points for the entire trip plus 75 dollars per day to be upgraded into the saint regis suite so i thought that was an amazing deal yeah nice the hotel looked absolutely incredible mm-hmm. from the pictures. Yeah. At what point in the trip did you actually pop the question? You know, that's first things first. Like I need, I need to do this right away. You know, I just can't wait. Like I'm so excited, and I, I would be, af- I, I would, I was afraid of maybe you know, so accidentally telling her or like maybe she'll catch on. So I was like, first things first, we, I have to do this right away. Day one, as soon as we get there, we arrived to the hotel like around 11 a.m. And I was like, all right, we could do use that day as like to recover because it is a 12 hour time difference from Chicago. So I was like, we're going to be pretty jet lagged. And it was perfect because she actually fell asleep like around 7 p.m. And I quickly called my butler just to double check everything. I was like, all right, this is what we have lined up. I just want to make sure everything can be done correctly. And then he's like, Juan, don't worry. I'll take care of it. The, and I was like, what about the weather? What about this? What about that? He's like, all right, if it's weather, then we can obviously move it to the next day. And so he's, this is a plan. All right, you guys are going to be at your, at your suite. I'll pick you guys up. We'll go to the whale bar for a drink. You guys can relax. And then we're going to the restaurant. Tell her it's going to be like an outdoor, I mean, uh, an indoor restaurant, nothing out of the ordinary. And I'm going to drive you guys through this like little hidden road and then we'll appear to the beach and that's where you'll have your outdoor dinner. And that's how we did it. And so I told her, I was like, oh, hey, you know, we're going to be having dinner. And then, yeah, we were going to be having dinner. We did all that. And then we arrived to the, actually, yeah, the, that day we we went to the beach and she saw from afar like the setup. And she's oh man like that looks so nice and this and that we should do that one time if we have enough time we should do that and i was like oh crap hopefully she didn't put it together because that's for actually that was actually for her like they were setting up for that day, that night for ourselves another thing that we did was when we were driving to the the whale bar she also was like man the weather's so perfect like we should just be outside the sunset's perfect everything is beautiful and then she's like, Juan, I really want to do like a beach dinner while we're here. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, maybe towards the end of the trip. Or we could talk to our butler, see what he recommends. And yeah, we get to the to the beach site. And, and I showed her and I was like, oh, this is all for you. And then I proposed to her. She said yes. And one thing that, that our butler did, he, is, he hired a photographer as well just to capture the moment, which was very nice of him. And yeah, and then beforehand as well, he's like, when, as soon as you get out of the little golf cart, give me the phone, give me your phone so I could record. So he recorded it as he captured everything. It it was just amazing. Yeah. That is an incredible proposal story. One that I'm sure if any ladies are listening to this, they're just like, I want that. I need to just have my boyfriend to this podcast episode so that they can plan something like this too. Oh my God. That's amazing. And so the next phase mm-hmm. in this too, because maybe it can be top, but maybe mm-hmm. not. You guys are planning a destination. Yeah. Wedding. Yeah. Is yeah. Yeah. We are. We are. We want to do it in, in Mexico, San Miguel de Allende. It's just really beautiful. And also the value of the dollar is like, I mean, weddings here in the U.S. are, are pretty expensive. And if we were to spend the same amount here in the U.S., spend it in Mexico, we get a lot more bang for our buck. Plus, both of our families are from uh, Guanajuato, so it's not too far from, or it's the state, and San Miguel Allende is, like, right in the middle, so both of our families can meet there. So, yeah, that's what we're trying to do, and if there's any way of, like, somehow getting a deal with either hotels or something to pre-book, maybe, like, 10, 15 rooms or whatever, then and then just, like, book that, put that on a credit card, possibly American Express Platinum, 5X points and, and stuff like that. So I'm always trying to think of ways, like, all right, what are we doing? What is the maximum amount of value that we can get out of what we're already going to do and just go from there? Oh, you are absolutely able yeah. to do that and book weddings and conferences and room blocks mm-hmm. and get points for everybody's room stays mm-hmm. as well. So, and you can get entire family into the travel hacking thing where you're like, Mom, just buy our flowers on your credit card. I'll yeah. reimburse you. But now 
you can get your plane ride yeah. for free or yeah. something like, like that. I'm always, I learned the hard way that like this could get pretty, like I, I'm really into the hobby and I, I'm always telling my parents or my brothers, I'm like, hey, use this card for this. Now you this card for this. Now you this for that. And they're always just like, that is so much. Like, how, how do you know? How do you keep up with this? And I'm like, you know, it's just, I, I like it. I'm a, I love researching stuff. I love re getting the best value of points. And I'm really excited for not only just to plan our wedding, but also what can I do like to maximize the amount of points that we could get from this uh, wedding expense. So I, I really want to keep track of everything. And I also want to show how possible, how it is possible to get your free honeymoon from the expenses of the wedding. So I, I, I'm going to try my best to document everything and write everything down and just show, be living proof. Like, all right, we're spending X amount on our wedding and this is the vacation that we had and from it. So I'll, I'll do that. That sounds mm -hmm. so cool. And I'll probably have you back for a sequel to this story. Once you guys have had yes. your wedding and your honeymoon, tell me all of the details again of how you plan all yeah. of this stuff. Yeah. So awesome. Oh, such a good story. All right. So as we're wrapping up here, if you can sum up all of your travel hacking mm -hmm. knowledge in one line for listeners today, what would your one line piece of advice? Be? Yeah, for me, I'll just ask, uh, like, I don't really care what if the answer is no, they'll say no. So like when I check into a hotel room and I'll just be like, hey, what are the chances of being upgraded? You know, it's our anniversary or it's my birthday. What are the chances of being upgraded? Same with flights or for anything that I do, just ask like you won't. The worst they can say is no. And another piece of advice would be, yeah, your credit. Don't get so hung up on, on your credit score number. It's just a tool for you to use to get leverage, especially in real estate. And I feel like if you want to travel, you know, open up the cards, you'll get a, a credit hit. Uh, you'll, yeah, you'll get a hit to your credit, but it'll bounce back as long as you pay on time. The average age of accounts also will take a little bit of a hit. But as, as long as you, in the long term, your credit score will raise, you'll bounce back. Yeah, that's such an important thing too, where a lot of people are like, I need to have a perfect credit score. But for the world of points and miles, and like you said, maybe real estate too, excellent is just as good as mm -hmm. perfect. So if you can get a free mm -hmm. vacation and take a group of 15 points on yeah. your credit score, it's like as, it as long as you're above back. a 740, you're going to get the best mortgage rates out there. So I feel like there's no point of trying to work towards getting an 800 or above or anything like that. So as long as you're above a 740, you could get any card you want. You could get some of the best uh, interest rates out there. So mm -hmm. I would definitely don't get so, oh, I don't want to open this because my credit score is going to take a, no, just get it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome mm. advice. All right. And speaking of awesome advice, can you recommend somebody else on the internet that listeners should follow because they have awesome travel hacking awesome. advice? Yeah, I would definitely nominate Jed Albert. You know, I love his content. I love all of his pictures that he takes. So if you can get him on the podcast, I would definitely be listening. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Jed Albert. For anybody who does not already follow him on Instagram, like the dream feed of beautiful mm -hmm. interior airplanes and hotels and everything. Yeah. He is one of my favorite Instagram feeds as far as travel yeah. content goes. All right. And where can we find you on the internet? Yeah, you guys can find me at Juan Ricardo Jr. on Instagram. That's my personal Instagram. I also have a website, vasttraveling.com. I post a lot of reviews of the flights. And hotels that I stay at, a lot of pictures, a lot of videos. Uh, I post how I booked the, the reservation. And uh, if you also, you guys need help with uh, credit card strategies, or if you guys want to plan a, a big trip and you guys need help building up your point balances, you, got, you guys can contact me for, uh, through there. We could set up a, a call. I offer free consultation right now. Uh, I'm, I'm also going to be posting a lot on how I plan on getting a free honeymoon with the wedding expenses. So if you guys want to follow that, I'll be posting and sharing a lot with that. Other than that, um, I'm an open book. You know, I wouldn't tell you guys to do anything I wouldn't do when it comes to, you know, building up your points or manufacturer spending. Um, if you guys have any questions or concerns, contact me there. Uh, but other than that, I, I had a blast talking about this. I feel I could talk about this all day. So yeah, talk to you soon. That sounds so great. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. It has been 
such a blast getting to talk with you about your Maldives trip, your proposal. Congratulations again. And I look forward to hearing about how you do your destination wedding and your honeymoon on points and miles too. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the GeoBreeze Travel Podcast. If any of the cards or other tools mentioned on today's call piqued your interest, please use the links in the show notes to apply or to learn more about any of the cards. Commissions earned from these signups help to support the podcast. Additionally, the single best travel hack I can recommend is finding friends who can show you about even more travel hacks, and it would mean the world to me if you could subscribe to this podcast and share it with a friend. And if you would like to meet even more travel hacking friends, come join one of our travel hanging hangouts. We discuss behind the scenes tips, celebrate each other's wins, and mostly just enjoy being around other people who enjoy this hobby just as much as you and I do. If you would like an invite to the next one, just head over to geobreezetravel.com hangouts and sign up to be on the invite list. See you there. Take care and happy travels.